what's up guys I'm back with another video for Cinema 4D and uh, this time the topic is going to be fields or uh, falloffs uh, if you're coming from R19, 18 or uh, older uh, you're used to falloffs but all the falloffs got replaced with fields and it's a really cool new feature that we have uh, so I'm going to try to show you the basic of fields and how to use them and then from there you can get creative and use them in your own projects uh, so the basic idea if I create this sphere I'm going to try to show you um, or explain as much as possible here. And let me just move this sphere up. So for example, you have this point light and the sphere. If you go to details tab and uh, turn on fall off or field is basically the same thing. It works in a linear fashion. So for example, uh, where the point light is right here is 100% intensity of the light and uh, where the cage ends is 0% intensity. So as, the, as soon as the uh, light hits the cage, um, the end of the cage here, uh, it's gonna fall off into darkness, as you can see. And right in the middle here is 50% intensity. And uh, that's basically what field, um, fields do. Uh, pretty much, uh, it's a zero to 100 strength curve. And uh, as you can see, if I put the light right in the middle here, as soon as the light hits this cage or this little point here, it's gonna fall off into nothing. As you can see, uh, the sphere is getting barely any light. And same thing if I drag the uh, cage past the sphere. Uh, right now, uh, we're getting 100% intensity of the light in the middle, about 50% intensity here, and about 0% intensity, and it's gonna fall off to nothing. And that's the basic idea all, of all the uh, fields that you have in Cinema 4D. And uh, the only exception is if you go to create fields, the only exception can be a random field, shader, sound, and so on, because it's based on sound or a grayscale map. Uh, but all of these, uh, torus, box field, and so on, uh, basically work from zero to 100 curve. Uh, so let me just show you what I mean. I'm gonna delete the sphere, delete the light, and I'm gonna create a MoCraft cloner and uh, let me just create this uh, cube and drop our cube inside the cloner. And if I go to the object and uh, instead of doing Y, let's just do X for 200. And let me just increase the count to about five. As you can see, we have five clones. And let me just try to space them out even more. Let's do 300. So as you can see, we have uh, five different clones and uh, fields can be used in many different things. For example, if you create deformers, we have fall off or fields in this category. If you go to your cloner and go to effectors, uh, you can drop your effectors there and your fields. Uh, so for example, if I do a more graph effector, and let's do a step effector. As you can see, it's inside our effectors list uh, under cloner. And if you go inside the step effector for the fall off, we have our fields in here. Uh, so with the step effector, uh, if you go to uh, effector, we have our strength curve from zero to 100, and it's basically uh, increasing the scale uh, because it's only affecting the scale right now if you go to our parameters. Right now, only the scale is uh, selected, as you can see, uh, but we can always do position, scale, rotation, and so on. Uh, so in this case, let's do a uh, position and change the position to 100 and go back to uh, effector and turn on the strength to 100 percent as you can see uh, we can animate this but it's not going to be as smooth as using fields uh, so if you go to fields or fall off and click on linear field we can always change it by the way if you click on your linear field and go to field we have the same list that i showed you here if you go to create fields, this is basically the same list. So there's two different ways of creating fields uh, if you make a mistake. And now uh, if you click on your field and drag from left to right, as you can see, uh, the position is changing and then we can easily animate this. And uh, to make this even better, let me just uh, go back to step effector and also effect, for example, rotation. Let me just put 45. And I'm going to bump this to 250 so we can see the effect even better because right now it's really a um, slight effect and you can't really see it. 
and uh, also let's change the color uh, so we can uh, get an idea of what's going on. So if I go on my step effector and go to uh, uh, color mode, let's do field color. And if you go to our field and go to color remap, we can choose a color to see exactly what's going on. So let's change this to red. And now if I click on my uh, linear field and drag this from left to right, as you can see, uh, white means uh, nothing is getting affected, and red means it's uh, effect is getting affected by our field. And uh, that's the basic idea of fields uh, that we can animate or whatever we want, and we can stack uh, fields or fall offs on top of each other. Uh, so this was our um, linear field, and if you go inside, we also have remapping options. So uh, for example, if you want to remap this uh, and uh, make this look uh, the way we want to, uh, we have this counter mode. Uh, so for example, if we do curve and scroll down, uh, we have the same curve that we've seen before from 0 to 100. Uh, but what you can do here is add your own points. So if I click Command and click on a graph, as you can see, I can add points and make really sharp transitions for my scale and rotation that I set in the um, step effector. So right now, if I drag this from left to right, as you can see, it's getting 100% and then back to zero, 100% back to zero. So if I move this nice and slow, you can see exactly what's going on. It kind of like jumps up and down. And uh, that's, that's the basic idea. And if you change the uh, field to something else, for example, we'll do a spherical field. And right now, as you can see, it's really not affecting our clones that good because the field is really small. But as soon as you make this bigger, and slowly move it across. As you can see, it's affecting our clones, uh, just like I said, from zero to 100, zero to 100 ratio. If you look at the graph for remapping, this is what I did. So let's try to uh, reset the graph and add one, just one point, and maybe do something like this. And Let's just drag and see how that affects our clones. As you can see, really nice and slow. And it falls off to 100 as soon as it's past our clones. Uh, so that's the basic idea of fields. And like I said, if you go inside uh, your step, step effector and go to fall off, uh, we have a opacity slider, which is like a strength curve. So there's so many different ways you can animate this. Also, we have uh, blending modes. So you can, you're not um, restricted to one falloff. You can use as many falloffs as you want. And then you can uh, blend them, multiply them, you know, do whatever you want on top. And uh, control each one, uh, each one's opacity. Uh, so you can get all kinds of different results. Uh, let's see what else is there to cover. Let me just click on a field. Uh, so we have our color modes, just to give you an idea how the field is working. Uh, remapping options, not much is going on here. Uh, just the spline range, it can be animated. Uh, spline offset, uh, animation speed, uh, the actual uh, spline, the curve, uh, the multiplier. And let's see what else we have. And all we have is just different modes uh, that we can um, play around with the fall off, as you can see. You can play around with your curve. You can uh, do like a sharp transition. You can do a much slower transition. It's really up to you. Uh, but the basic idea is it's from 0 to 100 curve. And you can uh, use the fields for many different things. You know, like I said, you can use it for volumes. Uh, this was added in R20. You can use it for deformers, uh, same fields that I showed you. Uh, you can use it for, um, if you go to simulate particle systems, you can use it for gravity, emitters, and so on. And uh, obviously the one I'm showing here is cloners. Uh, so there's many, many different things that can be done uh, with fields, uh, but hopefully you get a basic idea that 
you know, first you create your generator, which is a cloner, then you create an effector and uh, start changing things around. And then from there, if you want to get a full, full control, you use fallouts or fields. In this case, I have my spherical field, which I can drag from left to right and uh, affect my clones based on the step effector. And you can add even more effectors, you can add even more fields and uh, get all kinds of different results. Uh, but hopefully you get the basic guys. Uh, thank you for watching the video. Uh, please subscribe to my channel for more videos and hopefully uh, in the near future I'll cover all the other topics uh, based on uh, Cinema 4D R20. Uh, if you have any suggestions, you can leave in the comments. And uh, as always, have a nice day, and I uh, will see you in my next video, guys. Uh, goodbye.